So we had a great interview yesterday with Slugger Labby. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, I knew a lot about Slugger, but it was fun to learn more. I thought, you know, he's really good about details, remembers a lot about his history, and uh, remembers more about his own um, career than I do mine. Uh, but, you know, bounced around a lot. I thought your uh, idea or your you picked up on how similar his career was to Suitcase Jake, and he had sort of that same – happen stance or same uh same habit of you know becoming restless right that's sometimes he was sometimes he was moved out but other times he would just say yeah this ain't for me this ain't working i don't like the way uh i don't want to communicate or maybe i don't like the way they're communicating to me it felt a lot uh jake elderish but he did have these spans where he was very dependable very uh had some longevity like with michael um and where he's at currently with Toyota, uh, he's been there for a really long time. But yeah. it's great to t- it's great to talk to him, catch up. I thought he was honest and transparent. Um, I'll be honest, it was nice to get some of the North Wilsboro stuff off my chest. Um, yeah. I'm feeling just a little bit better about just being able to get all that out of my system because, um, yeah, I don't know. But um, well, listen, <clears throat> um, you definitely you you came in Tuesday feeling like it was. Uh, I don't know. You weirdly felt responsible for it, and yeah. I didn't think that that was. Ne- I think you weren't being fair to yourself, but at least you were being honest with us. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that the the way that show started versus the way this one did with Butch Lindley's uh, piece going into the studio, vastly different. Yeah. <laughs> vastly different, right? I was. Um, I wrote about. I wrote a bunch of notes down that I right. didn't even use Let's for hear. Slugger, um, but only one thing. See, you know, we were just sitting here talking. He just kind of would take us down the road of of all these things. The only thing that we didn't touch on was he almost died of Rocky Mountain spotted fever. He had a bout with that that was actually very, very serious that I didn't get, you know, we didn't get the chance to get to. When was that? Um, It was, he was actually a crew chief. It was actually during one of his, one of his runs as a crew chief. I'm not exactly sure exactly what year it was, who he was working with, but apparently it was really severe before it got diagnosed properly. And that he could get the care that he needed to to get turned around. Um, that was one. That was kind of the only thing that we didn't touch on. He touched on a lot of things that I didn't expect or know about. Right? Like what? We had a lot of research. We had a lot of good research on him. Um, Bobby Marcus that works on in several different um, positions within our organization here at Dirty Mo Media um, does a lot of research for us for our guests. Um, a lot of times, you know, I lean heavily into some of that stuff uh, that Bobby brings to the table. But sometimes with our guests, it's you know, it, the, the guest is so well known or what have you that it's that it's you know that you hardly even look at the page of information, right, to bounce around and find things to ask. But um, you know, there were just some things where I think him, you know, him clearing up, uh, him him being honest about his experience with Jeremy Mayfield and then wanting out of his contract, mm. um, his honesty around his time with Kenny Irwin and how that went down. Uh, you know, I thought he was respectful, uh, but also gave his truth, you know, and didn't, um, you know, didn't mail in the answers. Uh, but I thought, you know, and he's still in the business, right? And that's a particular difficult position for some of these guys that are still working in the industry to be in to come in here and actually say, "Hey, man, this is exactly what happened, and this is how I, I, that hurt or that you know that bothered me or I got angry with this guy or whatever." And um, a lot of guys that are still working in the industry are really kind of protective and guarded about being honest because they have to go back into that garage, you know, the next week uh, and face a lot of the people. Uh, you know, in our industry that are maybe a little careful about, you know, who they spend their time with. Very know? clearly political. I mean, yeah. that's the thing he hates about it. I wonder about this from you, though. Are you comfortable? Let, let me back up. <clears throat> I, the, when we have Slugger Labby on, yeah. the way we had Steve Mill on, and the way we're going to have Richie Gilmore on soon, yep. the, you know, obviously I'm fascinated by the DEI days, as I'm sure most of our listeners are going to want to hear yeah. each person's versions of that.
But I'm curious, and I, I don't want to take it for granted, but how comfortable or uncomfortable are you when we go rehash those 2001 to 2004, 2005, yeah. uh, you know, days? Uh, it, it's comfortable and uncomfortable. Um, you know, there were some good points and good times, wins and moments that we did well where those are very comfortable to talk about. Um, but like, you know, him saying, Hey man, I came over to your house at six thirty in the morning and y'all were still partying from the night before. And there was still a lot of people there and you were supposed to be going somewhere and you had forgotten about it. And, um, that is embarrassing, mm. you know, after all these years, uh, I feel like that in the moment when I was living that life, I thought, <clears throat> you know, I'm the Budweiser driver. Partying's part of my job. <laughs> it, I, I think that's a fair thing, right? Yeah. It I is. mean, it felt, it felt like I was doing no wrong. <clears throat> now I know better, you know, after all these years, now I know better. So sitting here across from any of the, any of the people that worked at DEI, um, Steve Meal and, and Michael. I mean, I've had, I'm faced, faced with having to admit not care, you know, not doing the right things, not making the right choices, or even saying maybe I did something or said something that was detrimental to them. Like Michael brought up a moment where he was like, you went into the media and went after me and told them people that you didn't think I was part of the team or part of the future. And so, yeah, that happens in this room, and it's an honest moment where you've got to be like, okay, yeah, I, must, I was a real jerk, or, or, yeah, I was making some bad choices, and I shouldn't have been the person in charge. I shouldn't have been the, I shouldn't have been the one to make that decision because I, I obviously clearly made the wrong decision. Um, and so that, yeah, it's uncomfortable, but I'm not um, opposed to having those conversations i know when somebody from the uh, comes in here there's going to be some moments where i'm going to have to sit there and go yeah i was i bear some responsibility hmm. right because i am not you know not no one is squeaky clean in all of that and um yeah well maybe there's some people that are but i certainly wasn't you know i could have done things better differently i could have been more professional i could have had my head on straight and been more career focused um uh but you know it it's so far in the rearview mirror now that there's nothing you can really do about it other than say yeah i admit i i, I should have done something different in that moment and i hope that's good enough for slugger or whoever else is across the table i i think it is good enough i think it's also somewhat necessary and i don't even know if you realize it or not but like you know i think back to ty <clears throat> norris when we had him on a year or two ago you know there's a lot of things that are said about those days that uh, people have been harboring. And I, yeah. I said it yesterday, that it seems to me, as somebody that's completely objective and was not around during those particular years, um, especially in the aftermath of your dad's death, was that there was, there was a lot of misunderstandings based off of just the, the natural human grieving and, and the fact that nobody was really in their right mind. And that's okay. Yeah. But the, you know what? In the case of Ty Norris, he kind of carried for two decades thinking that you were mad at him or you didn't you know like something and the fact of the matter is you don't even remember it that way you don't remember something and so like I think that some of the things you might be embarrassed about like I don't remember that or I don't it's it's actually <laughs> in a strange way somewhat um healing a bit because people can at least get out on the table how they remember it and maybe issues that they had and then they hear you say yeah I don't remember that but um sometimes it's just it, it's it's necessary. I hope that is it is healing. And the wor the one thing I think that I'm worried about is that it would cre it would dig up an old argument, an old mis uh, an, an old disagreement would be a new fresh one created for no reason at all. Right? I don't want to I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. And if there is you know if and everybody's going to have their version of what happened, and that's fine. I'm not going to dispute anybody's truth. They have they looked at it through their lens and how they experienced it. And and I'm I'm not uh, I'm not gonna get in the way of that. I think, you know, if I that's I don't mind talking about DEI, but I do not want it to create any, you know, friction or, mm. or frust be a source of frustration with anyone um that was involved in it because, you know, uh, every, you know, that would be the, the last thing I would want to do. 
So, <clears throat> you know, so it is a bit touchy or, or is a, is a little dicey, you know, when you, when you sit down with somebody who's been part of the, part of that organization and they're going to come in and go, Hey man, this is how I saw it. Yeah. And you're like, all right, I know that other people that were part of the organization are listening to this conversation and are going to have a different opinion about this, right? Yeah. And just because I'm sitting across the table from someone telling their truth, it's not that I'm, I'm it's not, a, it's not a, an, an endorsement, you know? Um, I don't know. I think that, uh, I appreciate you saying that. I also think that, um, what we might sometimes forget, and I hope it uh, doesn't get lost on anybody listening to our podcast, is that, frankly, I look at DEI as a reason to celebrate a, an extraordinary achievement through what was extraordinarily tough times. DEI, we can sit there and pick about pick, pick at the negative things and whether you can even pick about with, you know, you know, the ownership or the management or this crew chief or that crew chief. DEI, in it, at its best, was phenomenal watch it phenomenal racing and it was phenomenal a great, racing and, and at its best it was a really 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 fun place to be absolutely and i pass this thing every day coming to work and i look at it as a man, man what an amazing company this was at its height yeah at its height man just so fun to watch the personalities you know steve park you know winning at watkins Glen and and getting up on that car and then michael waltrip you know, what the the story of him not being able to win a race and then going in there. I mean, like he is there's just so many positive things that I hope that the people that come in here, we may have to get through the crap. But I hope that they come out uh, feeling appreciated yeah. because they were part of something special. Yeah.